Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Top 10 Tuesdays. DBougie86 here again. Yes, it's been a while since I did a Top 10 Tuesday, and I did want to continue this. I was actually going to do it uh, last week for you guys, but uh, a lot of hectic things started happening in my uh, personal life that kind of got me overdrawn and actually stopped me from doing a lot of videos that I had planned for last week, which I'm making up for this week, definitely. So, as it all, welcome back to the Top 10 Tuesday series. I'll be doing this as often as I can. It's very hectic during, like, this time season with, like, the holidays and uh, my job and stuff and just personal issues and life that I don't really want to get into because uh, then it'll just take way too long and it'd be kind of boring for you guys as me entertaining you. But other than that, uh, for my first Top 10 Tuesday back, I got kind of like a little inspiration from uh, you and your horror movies because he did a Top 10 double feature uh, Top 10. But I did this one a little differently. I am actually going to, well, I'll get, I decided to do my Top 10 double features, but they're not double features that you actually like come as a double feature. Like, you know two films in one type deal these are like two films that I pick out of my collection that I like to watch like as a its own personal like double feature type deal uh, and actually next week I'll be doing the actual like release double features uh, like two films that are released as one for next week's uh, top 10 I thought this one would be kind of fun because you could always like change these two up in a way and I would like to hear like what two films like if you have like a theme like double feature one night would you guys pick so leave some comments on this uh, subject very interesting and these aren't in any particular order this is just kind of like the first few that I always pair up together to my come to my mind so nothing's gonna be like in order of like one through ten this is just ten that came to my mind and wanted to show you guys and you could always change it up and if you have like a certain other film that you like to pair of any of the films that you've seen let me know in the comments as well so let's get right into it all right the first uh double feature that i like to do is uh dr terra's house of horrors awesome early 60s film from amicus and night train the terror now you're wondering what a makes this a cool little feature well for starters they're both anthologies and uh they surround a train like uh the stories are both told through uh, its main like uh, characters and like the wraparound stories of uh a train ride and i like the aspect of that alone i love films set in trains for some weird reason and especially anthologies or like any like it's very very contained and situations with like this the train in general but to have like a horror anthology set on a train is a plus also so yeah both of these anthologies that are set on trains really cool double feature especially if you're a big fan of anthologies i recommend both of these this is a very hell of a fun double feature in my opinion next up we got chopping mall and deadly friend now you're wondering why these two, well, for starters, they both uh, have something to do with like technology in a way, because you know, like they involve like uh, Deadly Friends kind of like a thing where like they make uh, this girl into like a, put this robot's chip inside this girl's brain and it makes her do what she does. And so it's kind of like a technologically gone wrong type deal. And then we got these robots that have malfunction and start killing people and chopping mall. And another thing that compares these two other than that is they both have two of the best fucking head explosions ever. And that's another way. So it's exploding heads all around, pun intended. So that's an awesome double feature. I like to watch those two together for some weird reason. Just the 80s vibes of them. And Another interesting note, they actually both came out the same year, 86, which is another interesting thing. Uh, next up, we got Squirm, 
and The Nest. Yes, I love watching these two together for some weird reason. Jeff Lieberman Squirm, awesome killer worm film. And The Nest is just an awesome cockroach film, which is gets batshit at the end. Really fun stuff. I, I usually kind of like mix it up, but this is usually the two pairs that usually ends up. That's why I have these two. Really awesomeness, gross out, double feature, because worms and cockroaches gross the shit out of me. So, fucking weird and odd and fucking awesome double feature right there. Next up is uh, two of my uh, favorite slashers. First, we got Stage Fright. Awesomeness right here from Sauve. And then we got Curtains. Now... The only thing that really uh, puts these two together is they're both slashers. And they're not even like the same type of slashers. I just like really like the stories of these ones and the settings. Uh, of course, this one takes place in like this uh, giant like playhouse, which is awesome. And I just like the look of both of the killers in both of these films. Uh, the hag mask in this one, like as you can see on the front cover there. And the owl head from Stage Fright is pretty fucking awesome. You can't deny that fact. So, yeah, both very fun films in my opinion. Two of my favorite slashers. I usually pair these two up if I just want to sit down and watch a few slashers that I know I'm going to enjoy type deal. And these are two that I highly enjoy. So, yep, I pair those two together. Next up is some Giallo's. First up, we've got Strip Nude from Your Killer, Good Family Fun, and Sister of Ursula. If you pair these two together, you're in for one hell of a sleazy fucking ride. Yes, both are very sleazy giallos, I have to say. Uh, especially uh, Sister of Ursula, where the killer's weapon actually is a phallic symbol. And the Strip Nude, it's Katura's nudity and... Of course, it has Edwidge Fennec in it, who's smoking hot in the film. Really great stuff. If you haven't seen both of these and you're a fan of Giallos and Sleaze in general, awesome fucking double feature. Another one that I would throw into the mix with these two is like, uh, if you want to do like a triple feature, is New York Ripper, Fulci's film, which is fucking sleazy as all hell also. So that is a very cool double feature. Next up, we got Chaz and Pig Hunt. Yes. Now we got two killer pig slash boar films. One from America, one from Korea. Uh, very different sort of effects in both of them. Uh, I just like watching these two together, especially... Uh, the way I do it is I watch Chaz first because it is the longer film of the two and then I'll watch Pig Hunt. I usually mix up my Killer Boy films but I usually been watching these ones a lot lately because uh, just for the simple fact that uh, I watch a lot of Killer Pig films. I and other ones I usually alternate in these like rotation with these two is like Razorback and Prey. But these are the two main ones that I go back to because they are fun and have a lot of interesting things going on in them. And they actually both have awesome soundtracks. Pig Hunt's actually scored by uh, Les Claypool, who, of course, from Primus. Fucking awesome soundtrack. And next up, we have uh, two Asian anthologies. We went back in the anthologies and decided to do another one just because there are two Asian ones. And of course, the first one is Three Extremes. Of course, that you probably all know about this one. Of course, with three segments directed by Takashi Miike, Fruit Chan, and Park Chan Woo. Fucking awesomeness right here. And then we have Horror Stories, which uh, is from Artsploitation Films, which has uh, four horror stories with six directors. I think they pair up type deal. It also has like a wraparound story, which is pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, I enjoy watching these two back to back because I have like an Asian night. And I don't want to watch two like, you know, overly like complex and crazy like Asian films. I'll throw in like two fucking solid uh, 
insanely good like Asian shorts, especially uh, Three Extremes cut by Park Chan Woo being my favorite segment and all that one. Really good stuff. And uh, this one I actually dig all like the segments on. Uh, probably my favorite one would be uh, Secret Recipe. That one's pretty fucking awesome. But yeah, I really enjoy both of these. Great double feature, especially if you're a fan of Asian horror and anthologies. Can't go wrong with either one of these. Next up, we have Demonoid and the Hand. Yes. Now the thing that separates these is they're both killer hand movies. Fucking awesomeness right here. Uh, very cheesy, and uh, I believe both came for out in the yeah, both came in the eighties. Actually, this one came out a year before the Hand. So if you did want to do this, you could do. It. I would actually do it either way, to be honest. It doesn't mean I, if you're like one of those guys that likes chronological. The way I do it is I like to put the the longer film first because then you have like something to look forward to, like with like a short film because the film's uh, almost an hour and forty minutes long. The hand is and Demonoid's only seventy nine minutes. So what I usually do is, uh, you know, I usually put the because if you watch Hot Fuzz, they always say never put the longer movie at the end of the double feature type deal. So that's the way I roll. So I always put the longer movie first, and both are very fun and cheesy and of their time. Of course, the hand directed by Oliver Stone, goodness right there. Now here's a very interesting double feature. First up, we got the car, which is pretty fucking awesome movie from the seventies, and we got Crash, which is. Also, I believe from the 70s, I could, yep. Actually, ironically, these came out the same year. <laughs> and they both involved like a killer car. Very fucking fun shit. Uh, and there's like a supernatural presence attached to both these cars, which makes them the ultimate like supernatural killer car double feature of awesomeness. So yeah, I'd recommend both of these. Really fun double feature really dig both of those films uh the transfer on crash isn't as great because uh, it's a uh, full moon of course directed by charlie band but still a fun film actually really good cast in that one too and the last double feature that i have to show you guys is of course bad taste and bread and circus if you haven't seen my review of bread and circus or bad taste there are ones on body bags and the other ones on my 31 Days of Horror. The first one, not the second one. This is actually the first film I opened my first 31 Days of Horror of. And I gotta say, fucking fun ass double feature. And it's just fucking awesome. Really fun stuff. And these cans go in hand because pretty much these are like batshit awesomeness of course bad taste directed by peter jackson uh brendan circus is a norwegian film which is kind of like a homage to it was still fucking awesome i highly recommend both of these fucking fun ass films and that's it for uh my double features top 10 guys like i said i like to know like what two films do you pair up for like your own type of double feature and you could tell me the theme in the comments. I would be highly recommendable. Kind of curious. And I'll see you next Tuesday with another uh, top 10. This one was going to be like two double feet, a double feature that's actually paired together type deal. Like, for example, like the ones that Scream Factory did, there might be a few of those in there. And a few others. I'll mix it up for that top 10. So I'll see you then, guys. Peace out.